This is the time of year where you get together with your family, friends, or other close people, and do what exactly? Play board games. And in this video, we're gonna pick the best board games for this occasion. In this video, we're gonna draft 12 different board games for Christmas. And we're gonna do it in six different categories. And whenever a game is drafted, it can never be drafted again. So, everyone's here. And, well, guess what? Dinner's not ready yet, so you have some time to kill. And what's the best game to do it with? I'm picking a game called Coyote. You can actually play it during the dinner. But, I mean, it's Christmas time, so you wanna, you know, enjoy the dinner without any... Without other... any... what, having fun? So, in this game, each player will have a card with a number, or maybe a multiplication card, maybe a negative number. And then you can see everyone else's number, but not your own. And you have to guess a number that's the sum of all these numbers without going over and wherever everybody else has passed. Then the round ends and you see if you guessed correctly or not. You have to say a higher number than the previous person or pass. And then when everyone's passed, we see how well it went. Usually not well at all. But it's quick, it's really, really funny and it has some twists and turns that's just uh, enjoyable by everybody. Well, mine's gonna be a bit more on the long side. Mine's called Celebrities, which actually is a public domain game. If you know the rules of this game, you can play, you know, right now. Pause the video, go play, and then come back and comment, did you like it? In Celebrities, uh, you will need paper and you will need something to write with. And then you give each player something to write with and you give each player uh, small pieces of paper. And then you write down Celebrities. It can be fictional ones, you can write anybody you all know, doesn't matter, just write the names of them. And then you throw in the pool, there's a big pool of names now. And then you play in pairs, and when it's your pair's turn, you just pick a card, and you need to explain this word without saying it. Simple, we all know this, right? Mm -hmm. And then if you're correct, you take it for yourself and take the next one, and you have a limited amount of time to do this. Once the cards run out, you write down the points, and you start the second round. But the second round is where you can only say one word. You can still, you know, gesticulate or use your hands or, or make sounds, whatever, but just one word. And then there's a third round where you can't use any words. The twist is that it's the same words throughout each of the rounds. You don't use new ones. And it just plays really quick. It's simple. It's always funny how you try to remember things. One game we played and we use a lot of Marvel characters and we would just go like, you pick a card and you go like, it's Thor. Sorry. And then you do that, and it's uh, Wolverine. It's really simple, and it's funny how you, you remember these little things. I haven't played Celebrities. I have played its physical version. Monikers? Yeah, yes. yeah. So if you don't want to make up your own, Monikers is a good way to pick it up. If you're fine with making your own, then just make your own. Next category is Team Game. So you go first. Mine is Last Message game where one player plays the victim, another player plays the criminal, and all the other players play detectives. And the detectives are on the same team as the victim. So you have this big picture, something like uh, where's Waldo picture or micro macro city, where's like ton of characters there. And then the victim and the criminal, they have the same picture and they pick together which one is going to be the criminal. And then the victim is going to give clues to the detectives and uh, they have four rounds to try to find out who of those all characters is the one. But the trick is that the victim is going to draw on this board that has nine squares. And once he's done, he can write, he can draw, he can do whatever he wants there. He's gonna give this board to the criminal and the criminal is gonna erase five squares out of nine. The detectives get what's left. You have four rounds to guess the criminal. It's just funny, it works well, it's really easy to get into, it's easy to play. It sounds like if you're a fan of like Mysterium, yeah, and those yeah. sorts of games, then uh, this could be a good yeah, for you. Except this one's really super quick. It takes like 10 minutes to play. My pick is Captain Sonar. I'm going with the light version, which is the family version, which is two to four players. You have a submarine. The other team has a submarine. Yep. It's usually two against two people. And you have to sing the opposition. Yeah. You have a huge screen between you. And one of you is the captain, moves the submarine around and uses the, its abilities like uh, hiding, like uh, shooting the missile. And the other one is radio specialist. He's tracking what the other team is saying. Whenever you move your ship, you have to say out loud, uh, where are you moving? it up down right left mm -hmm. never the position just the movement in which yeah, direction yeah, yeah. you're moving so the other team's radio specialist can can write down all right he moved left and then right and then left the radio operator know can know that 
Um, the summary no way can be there because he couldn't move left because there was like a, an island there. Because he's actually riding on the see-through layer and then he moves that see-through layer around trying to figure out where the other submarine can go. And once you think you know, you can try to shoot it. Uh, loads of fun, so yeah, I recommend Yeah, very it. good pick. I, I second that. Yeah. yeah. I got you a present. What? Really? It's likes and subscribes. It's exactly what I wanted. Thanks. I'm also going with like a quick game, yeah. uh, with a co-op game, which is Silencio. Very simple game, uh, it really really reminds me of The Crew. It has similar mechanisms, just with like super abilities and with some other twists. But you as a team have to play cards in correct order to win. You have to always play it uh, ascending order, yeah, these cards. Yeah. For example, Yanis played a 9 and I have an 8 in my hands. We probably have lost, unless I have a superpower. So it's a lot of calculation, a teamwork, and as the name suggests as well, it's silent game, so you can't talk during this game. But it's quick, it's fun, and it's really uh, a team building ex exercise that I enjoy. Mine's gonna be Blabel. Blabel. Right. Blabel. Blabel is a co op game where you create a tower of Blabel. What it means basically is you just have to put cards like in a certain order. Key here is that if you know the story of the Tower of Blabel, is that people from different nations came together with different languages. Here we have our own like dictionaries and uh, names for materials. Like, for example, to build this level uh, or this construction, we need wood and we need, for example, an arch. In my language, those things are gonna be different than in your language. But the thing is that some people have very similar names. Right. Not exactly the same, but it might sound similar and then they go like, oh, I think I know what it is. And then they have to try to guess. The premise is really simple, but the game is not that simple to, to get what everyone's saying, try to remember. But it's very definitely unique and it's funny. Every time we play, it's very funny, yeah. So my story game is gonna be uh, kids, I think. I enjoyed it a lot and I've played with my kids a ton of times now. And it's called Storytailers. So it's basically a Dixit type of game. So how it works is one player takes a card and reads a story. Like Our adventurer began his journey in the edge of the woods trying to find the treasure. And then everyone has to play the adventure, what they think is gonna be our adventure, like face down. Like in Dixie cards, you just pick a card, play it face down, where everyone has played, we shuffle them up, reveal them, and then everyone votes what you think is going to be the adventure or fits this part of the story. And then we like vote, and then the one who voted most is our adventure. So it's like a Dixit, but they do have like nine or 10 different stories in the game that you read, and there's actually a story, and one story is like 20 minutes. It's very simple, it's straightforward. I enjoyed it with my kids, I don't know if it's gonna be very good with just grown-ups, but grown-ups with kids, definitely fun. So mine is not more for Christmas Eve, maybe day before or after, when it's snowing, everybody's really calm, relaxed, and they wanna have an adventure. This game is something we recently, well, recently in the summer, reviewed and fell in love with, absolutely. It's a role-playing game, it's full of story, and similar to yours, we are the ones who are making the story up, and it's called Alice is Missing. An amazing, very cinematic feeling, Definitely. to be honest. This game is a silent game where you don't talk and create this story by, by texting each other. The main premise is that, yes, Alice is missing and I could be her brother. And uh, we just get this news that, hey, Alice is missing. And we start chatting with each other. Hey, what do you think happened? Your group creates the story, but the game helps you make it and helps you very, very well. Yeah, it pushes into directions because there are triggers like, I mean, the soundtrack. <sighs> wow. I, I still listen to it. You put on the soundtrack and each time uh, there's uh, like 55 minutes or 45 minutes, there's a trigger and you draw a card and it pushes you in a, it nudges you in a mm. direction where you could take the story. If you have a fireplace at home, you know, yes. warm blankets, the cinematic music in the background, and then you play this game, it's very, very magical. So I recommend it. Just to summarize, so basically everyone just sits around the room and, you know, stares into their phones, right? Yeah. So just like a classic Christmas evening these days, yeah. right? But it is for more mature audiences. Yeah, this sure. is not for kids. The themes can be pretty dark. There can be like uh, criminal activities and things like that. Christmas is all about giving presents and leaving presents, right? Yes. So this game is also about leaving presents in the living room. <laughs> this game nice. is 
who did it. It's an awesome kids game and we always say that the best kids games are the ones who adults can enjoy as well. Yep. This absolutely hits the bell. Somebody pooped on the floor <laughs> in the living room <laughs> and of course as a normal adult person you don't want to feel like it was your animal. Of course so not. You it never is my animal. So you immediately start advocating for it was not my cat. I play out the cat card and I will loudly say it was someone else's turtle. Oh, and then I have to be the first one to play out the turtle and if I do then I go no 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 no, no, it wasn't my turtle. It was somebody else's carrot eater. That's it. It's fun. It's quick and just brilliant. Qu it's brilliant also a fantasy or a mystery game. You know why? Because there's a fish. And do explain how does the fish get out of its aquarium and poop on the floor. I no one knows. A it's a mystery game. Mine's going to be a quick dexterity type of game. It's going to be called Ghost Adventure. Do you know what a Beyblade is, right? Of course, who doesn't? Yeah. So basically, each player has a board and then one player is going to start on their board and they're going to spin this Beyblade thing and it's going to be spinning there and you have to go to a certain place mm. and then pass this Beyblade to the other player oh, and then right. he has to catch it and go to his thing and then pass it on and we have certain amount of spins like lives because if it stops spinning you have to return to like a checkpoint and then start from there cool. so you have a certain amount of lives to pass through all of those and the tasks get progressively harder as you play sometimes you even have to throw it in the, uh, throw it in the air and then flip your board and catch it back all down right. but it does look cool when you do it and it's it's like almost a toy it's it scary. could also be like a cool show when everybody's sitting at a yeah. table you know eating and you want to show them oh. give kids this thing and yeah. everybody could you know yeah. go and, wild and you have extra challenge because there's probably candles and things mm. you can't knock over you yeah, know yeah. right it's so fun it sounds definitely. awesome ghost adventure <laughs> and what would be christmas without presents right exactly not christmas is the answer For what me. did you get me <laughs> just not let's just do the video okay <laughs> i mean there's still time Deep Sea Adventure is a family game where you're trying to push your luck. So we are all uh, divers from the same submarine. So we have the same amount of air for everybody. And you're trying to dive deep in, grab treasure and get out. But the thing is, the deeper you dive, the less time and air you might have to get back up. But the treasure is more, uh, better down there. But also, the more treasure you have, your dice rolls get worse and worse as you go. Because you're, you're carrying a lot right? of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's a really nice game how to teach your kids not to be greedy. It's a fantastic family game with a push luck element, which takes like 20 minutes to play. So it's really, really nice. So it's a little baby of Clank type of games, right? Oh, yeah, actually, yeah. good comparison. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like a really simple like Clank intro game. Yeah. I'm also going with like a smaller game because I agree smaller games are good presents and it's visually so pleasing. The gameplay feels like everybody could enjoy it and it has a lot inside that box, little box. Okay. It's Sparks. Oh, I already have. So you're not giving to me. Either. No, I'm not giving oh. to you but anything. Pick, yeah. You didn't get anything for me. So I, screw I, you. I did. I just didn't bring it with me. Uh -huh, <laughs> just, uh -huh. I have it back at home. Sparks is a beautiful game about traveling to Parks, photographing, uh, taking cool photos, and just uh, getting a lot of points. Yep. As simple as that. With really cool, unique elements to the game. Mm -hmm. The main idea is that you have two workers, two travelers that go through these parks, yep. and you can get resources by going to these parks. It's like wood and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You can collect these and get point cards, park cards. There's also some equipment that you can buy and there is a lot of strategy decisions. So it's a deep game, but a small and quick one, which is yeah. awesome for a present. It's a really nice family game. I agree. It, uh, it actually does feel like you're relaxing and walking through parks. It's a competitive game, but it doesn't feel like a cutthroat. It's meditative game. for sure yeah. as well. An awesome thing about this as well is that there, it's very interactive because usually when you take up a space, the other per person can't go there if unless they have like special abilities, whatever. If you're the last one in the park, you have to immediately go to the end. So you don't yeah. want to be the last one. So you're very interested in what other people will do as well. And they can buy your parks that you are collecting resources for. So a lot of emotions, lots of interactions. Also being meditative. It's yeah. a very yeah. cool balance between these and, things. And I really love how it looks visually. Those were our picks for this video. So what are you planning to play in Christmas? Let us know. Did you find any of these games maybe? Something you're interested in? Yeah. All in the comments. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, share and like. See and you next time, buddy. Yeah, happy holidays, right? Or lady. And so you didn't get me anything, right? Uh, not yet. You already said that it's not yet Christmas. No, no but let's Still be month. honest. So you didn't get me anything. If you have to answer now, did you, you did? get me anything? You did. I said it's at home. At I home? Didn't. 
Then uh, it's at my home as well. <laughs> Isn't this your home? 